And we're live, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Kirana Kasalilie, Nari, Omoyeko, Ali, Hello, Yakwe, Talofa, Maloilele, Nisam Bulavinaka. Welcome to the second learning lab of the Pacific Resilience Meeting. We have an exciting session ahead of us um, to provide you an overview of integration in theory and through your feedback, build a common understanding of what integration really means and also provide the space for us to discuss some of the key points raised in session one, putting integration into action, a youth-led conversation. For those of you who've just joined the session, um, Epeli was quite clear today that the youth have thrown down the gauntlet to effect change and to be a part of that now, not for the future, but now. Now, during this learning lab, we would like to hear from you and we hope that in doing so, learn from each other as well. My name is Litem Bukoto, and I will be your MC for this session. Now, in an ideal world, we would have had the chance to meet during the coffee break and maybe even over lunch. So we're going to ask you for your help with uh, introducing yourselves. So if you're on a device or a machine, please use the poll to introduce yourself. Um, and this is a very simple poll that just basically asks you a question around what hat are you wearing for this session. I'd also like to acknowledge colleagues connecting in from the national hubs in the Cook Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia, Kiribati, Nauru, Palau, Marshall Islands, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. May I please request the National Hub facilitators to collect and share this information through the chat. And if you have a big group, please collect the numbers and please share with us the detail um, following this. And I believe someone is going to share with us the results so that we could have a quick look. Okay. What we might do is maybe share the results at a later time. Um, so moving along, um, I don't want to be the only person talking to you because I'm sure that there's a lot of discussion that we're going to be prepping up for the rest of the session. So to get us started, Linda Vike will be providing an overview of emerging themes from recent research on integration. And if you're wondering what integration I'm talking about, it's actually the integration of disaster risk reduction and climate change. And this research that she is going to reflect on includes that by the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, and the Humanitarian Advisory Group with World Vision Australia. Now, Linda is a PhD candidate and a teaching assistant at the University of the South Pacific. Her research interests are in climate change, pardon me, are in climate and disaster risk finance and its contribution towards resilient and sustainable development in Pacific small island developing states. Ms. Vaike also teaches climate change and disaster risk management postgraduate diploma courses at the university's Pacific Center for Environment and Sustainable Development or PACESD as we more commonly um, would refer to it. So Linda, the floor is in your over to you, Naka. Uh, thank you, Litia. Uh, we'll just wait uh, 
for those responsible to share the screen with us. Uh, So while we're waiting for Linda's screen to come on, the presentation to come on, I can probably share with you the poll results. So about 8% of us on this, on this session are representatives of government. 33% um, are civil society. So well done. 20% are, are international governmental organizations. We have 8% from the private sector about 3% for multilateral and bilateral partners, 14% um, for, from academia, well done, well done guys, well done. And we have 8% community um, representatives. And we have a mix of others uh, around 6%. So thank you very much for that. Over to, back to you, Linda. Okay, uh, uh, sorry for that. Um, I was waiting for the screen to be shared. Uh, and so my, my task today is uh, to take you through a brief overview of um, Can you see the, the, sorry, Linda, can you see the, the, the PowerPoint in the background? Yes, I can. Thanks, okay, Fernanda. Perfect. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, so uh, my task today is to take you through a brief uh, overview of uh, disaster risk reduction and climate change integration uh, in theory. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Fernando. Yeah, so uh, when we speak about integration, uh, we are talking about bringing together climate change adaptation and disaster risk uh, reduction. Uh, there has been a recognition that climate change and disasters are interconnected and that they affect and are affected by economic and social development choices. And so while climate change adaptation refers to actions to reduce the negative impacts of climate change and uh, disaster risk reduction aims to reduce uh, damage caused by natural or uh, man-made hazards. The intent is, uh, the reasoning behind this is that uh, integrating the two would help us lessen uh, risk but also uh, ensure that we have a coherent and holistic approach in approaching risks. Next slide, Fernanda. Yeah, so what are the benefits and, and constraints related to disaster risk and climate change integration? Uh, we can see across, uh, the body of literature uh, that exists in this space that uh, the benefits uh, involved with integration include uh, reduces, uh, it reduces climate related losses through widespread disaster risk reduction measures. It also increases efficiency of use uh, of resources. Uh, both financial, human, and um, 
yeah, financial and human uh, resources. And it also enhances effectiveness and sustainability of climate change and disaster risk reduction approaches. Uh, integration also helps reduce this duplication uh, so that we don't have uh, people do duplicating efforts uh, with the already limited resources we, we have. Uh, but it also contributes to uh, lessening confusion at the operational level. And uh, another benefit is, is with, re with regards to communication. Uh, when we have integrated approaches, uh, we, we see greater uh, information sharing and, and uh, also mutual learning across the two different spaces. And it also prom promotes a holistic, systematic, a holistic and systematic understanding of risk. Uh, it fosters better coordination and collaboration among stakeholders and partners, and it, it improves planning processes towards more ris risk informed, uh, sustainable development. We also have uh, constraints uh, that we've seen across the literature in terms of uh, the integration approach. So one of the things we are clearly seeing is that it's time consuming, especially when you have to, um, to maintain a coordination uh, mechanism that is, is sustainable and works uh, for both communities. And it also requires flexibility across uh, institutional mandates. So where we have mandates that currently, uh, that do not speak to uh, each other in terms of uh, integration, uh, we see challenges uh, in that space. And uh, there is also a need yeah, and, and from that, uh, there is also a need for uh, institutional mandates to, to collaborate for it to be effective. And it requires harmonization across different levels. And sometimes when we deal with harmonizing, uh, harmonizing efforts across different levels, we are often all also faced with conflicting priorities across different institutions. And one of the constraints as well is to do with uh, accountability and confusion of responsibilities. Uh, we have cases where there's always confusion on, on us, roles of different stakeholders and where they should come in, when they should come in and how they should contribute to the process. And then also with uh, funding structures. Uh, while, there's, while we talk a lot on integration, there remains uh, separate mechanisms funding the two different uh, phenomena, uh, the climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. And this also causes a lot of confusion when addressing risk in, a, uh, in, risk in an integrated manner. The, the final constraint that I would like to raise here is with regards to uh, the evidence and gaps. There is limited availability of comprehensive risk assessments and capacities for science-based policy uh, decision-making. And also we have a big gap in, in trying to learn how integration would work in the case of our communities across different groups, across different uh, levels of society. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, Fernanda, can you just? Yeah, so why, why is it promoted in the Pacific? Uh, I think if you've been in learning in session uh, one, uh, we have highlighted that uh, the Pacific Islands is among the first to uh, take on 
uh, take, take on the integrated uh, uh, approach. And for us, uh, we are seeing high levels of loss and damage related to climate change impacts uh, to small island states as a driving force behind efforts to integrate climate change and disaster risk reduction. There is limited number of personnel in public administrations. Often these small public administrations are overburdened with uh, work relating to uh, building resilience uh, for communities whilst also responding to their international reporting obligations. So we are seeing integration as a need to join efforts and to uh, sort of streamline processes and reporting uh, uh, obligations uh, a bit. And uh, the Pacific Islands also see that there's, uh, there's, there's the approach of coordination uh, helps with uh, more coordinated efforts uh, at, the, at the national level, but also at the, the, the regional level and, and, uh, and with efforts uh, going down to the community level. And uh, we also uh, see that there's a need to align with realities on the ground that do not differentiate climate change and disaster risk reduction. I think here what we are saying is that um, at the local level, it is quite difficult to differentiate uh, the impacts of climate change and disaster risk reduction and the responses uh, to those. And so aligning this would, uh, would also help us uh, uh, in terms of like I mentioned before, confusion at the local level, but also uh, to realize that once we address climate change and disaster risk reduction in a more coordinated uh, uh, manner uh, in, in terms of integration uh, at the community level, this means we are addressing risk from both climate change and, and disasters. And so I will just uh, try to situate this uh, discussion uh, with what came out uh, from uh, session one and, and also to, to, to align ourselves as, as we, we, we continue with uh, what, what is planned for this session. So from uh, session one, uh, we picked out three main, uh, three key messages that, that came out from that session. And uh, the first one is uh, integration is, is not the end game. Um, we had uh, in session one, uh, I think this came out clear that uh, while there's so much talk on, on integration, the FRDP, the policies that are, are starting to to implement inter integration, uh, that is not the end game. What we wanted out from these discussions is really building resilience and reducing risk for communities who are more vulnerable, communities and groups who, who are the most vulnerable uh, to climate change and uh, disasters. And the second point uh, was there needs to be greater alignment from national to community and across sectors. Uh, this came out uh, strongly from, from uh, a national government uh, rep that was on the panel. Uh, uh, I think this goes back uh, to, to show what's happening in Vanuatu, being a country that is proactively uh, engaged in, in this process. And, and so uh, the, the message here is, is that while there's a lot happening at the national level, uh, there needs to be greater alignment, uh, both vertically and horiz uh, horizontally across um, uh, from the international level to the community level, but also across uh, different sectors. 
And uh, finally, the, F the FRDP is an initiative to catch up with countries uh, to integrate disaster risk management and climate change adaptation. So the FRDP is, is not uh, is not something uh, that puts us at the, the beginning of the journey uh, for integration. Uh, it mainly, it, what, it, what the FRDP does is it complements what is already happening at the national level and what has already happened. Uh, we've learned that they, there were integrated uh, policies and plans even before the FRDP. So uh, yeah, the FRDP is mainly uh, a framework that complements what's already happening at the national level. Uh, and yeah, that's the end, the last slide. Thank you very much, Linda, for that. Um... It's always good when someone reminds us um, that the journey has not be just begun, um, that this is something that we've been on for since the beginning of time and we'll continue to, to grapple with uh, as, we, as we proceed. Um, now, this gets to the exciting bit, which is really the group discussion um, where we would like to hear from yourselves and have you involved um, around building this understanding of what integration in practice looks like and also potential ways in which we could move forward with it. Um, so we will have two questions that we will pose to you. The first question being, what does climate change and disaster risk integration mean to you? And the second question, if you had a magic wand, what actions would you take as an individual acting in your community, in your country, or even in the region that could better support climate and disaster risk management um, in this uncertain future. So we will have uh, three separate breakout groups. Um, so what I'd like you to do is just, you know, decide whether you would prefer to engage with a group that will look at either a local, a national or regional. Um, for the national hubs, your facilitators are on standby. If I could just please ask them to just stand up and introduce yourselves to your groups. Um, and what I'd also like you to do is to maybe discuss and agree on which of the three levels you will participate in. Um, unfortunately, because you have one, uh, one entry point to the platform, uh, we won't quite be able to, to have your full representation uh, in the discussion. So may I please ask that the National Hub facilitators have these discussions now. For those of you online, I'd really like for you to look at the, the group with which you'd like to join. Um, please take into consideration the level that, you know, where you're most active, you know, whether it be local, uh, national or regional. Now we do have three moderators standing by um, to assist you with the discussions. We have Niumai Kavua from the Fiji Red Cross Society. Um, Niumai is the youth coordinator, um, as well as the COVID-19 coordinator. Now, during the tenure at the Red Cross, um, Niumai has been, a, has been an advocate for greater youth engagement. Um, and there was something that was actually quite, um, for me, quite exciting when I went through the CV and it's, it was this thing called technological skill set and great creative capacity of young people should place them at advantage to build resilience wherever they are. So well done. Um, and Chofiliti Vekoso, um, who will take the national level uh, group is a gender and resilience officer at Live and Learn. Um, now, you might be interested in this. So Chafaliti has also participated in a number of fora. Um, and in one in particular, he was a panelist alongside the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on youth and climate change. And our third moderator is Rania Mohammed. Um, and Rania will be taking us through the regional discussions um, she is the Fiji National Coordinator with the Commonwealth Youth Climate Change Network. Um, Rania is currently a student at the University of the South Pacific. Um, and she, through her volunteer work, has helped to develop 
uh, an insight into the importance of actually integrating climate change with disaster risk management. So if I may please ask you to please head off to your breakout groups, um, group one for local level, group two for national, and group three for regional. Um, given where we're right in the time, we will have a slightly shortened uh, discussion. Um, so please get to it. Punaka. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, so we'll be moving to the breakout rooms now. So all you need to do is leave this session, go to the furthest right tab called breakout rooms and select your breakout room. When that is over, you can come straight back to the session and uh, finish everything off. Thank you. Uh, Linda, are you in, are you still here in the room? Yes. Okay. So, um, how much time do we now have left for the for this discussion? Do you know? You mean for the breakout? Yeah. Are they going to pull us back at um, already twelve thirty-four, two thirty-four? So she said, she sent an email regarding that, let me just check. Okay, so we will, they'll pull them back at, no, that's not, decision to 2245. Is it quarter two that they will pull them back or is that when we finish? I think they will pull them back for us to present and then Okay. Is she okay. emailed? Who Alijia, she? Ali yes. Hiya, nice. Litea, Linda, the session is still yes. live on the system, so we cannot really have a, a conversation over here. We just have to wait for everybody to come back in the main room. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry.
Bula and welcome back everyone. Um, I hope you had fun. Some of your uh, group session uh, moderators have uh, been providing us feedback uh, on the side. So I hope you found that really useful. Um, and what we'd really like to do, and, we, and I thank you so much for your, for your inputs. I mean, we, I, we've been watching the notes as they've come in and we can see that there are a number of common threads that are coming through, you know, not from the local, um, national, as well as regional. Um, that's, that, that was quite interesting. So I would just like to um, invite uh, the, mo the moderators to maybe pick a point and, and just maybe share some of the discussions that have happened in, 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 your, in your groups. So Numa, if I may please, if you could please just you know, pick up a point on what the local level group discussions have been like, particularly around what, what integration meant uh, for them, Naka. Yes, thank you, um, Litea. Um, some of the key discussions from question one was really uh, picking up on traditional knowledge, uh, looking at what currently exists um, and how we can uh, integrate that with the context that we're currently in, in terms of COVID-19. Uh, so there were talks about communication, uh, using technological platforms uh, to be able to communicate this message across in regards to integration. Uh, so there were, uh, a lot of uh, look, a lot of perspectives around traditional knowledge specifically for that, and how it can and it can excel or accelerate um, integrating climate change and disaster risk reduction. Thank you. Nakanya, my uh, please don't leave yet. Um, I was wondering if you'd be able to also share um, some of the reflections around the magic wand. Yes, um, so uh, some of the discussions that came across was really um, being able to uh, take the first steps. Uh, so there was an interesting point that was raised around we're in a COVID time. Uh, and so technology has been at the fore of all of this. We've been using technology to be able to organize things. So it's a, hu it's a huge platform and a good stepping stone to be able to uh, advocate awareness around this in communities. Uh, so uh, social media platforms were highlighted uh, to be able to uh, pass this message across. You can do it in a community or you can basically do it as an individual. Uh, so just it went back to uh, each individual being able to do what they can from their spheres with the current situation. Naka. Naka um... Nyamai. Chofiliti, if I may ask, um, maybe with the, the two questions uh, for your national level group around what integration meant for them, um, as well as the follow up around the, you know, if they had a, if they had a magic wand, Vinakwa level. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lita. I think from uh, the question um, from the uh, uh, from the the national level, uh, there was um, there was a lot of uh, good discussion on the inter, uh, you know on um, educating young people to see them how it's closely linked of uh, climate change adaptation in DRR, and uh, something also that came out uh, very strongly was on. Of vertical and horizontal approaches on uh, regional frameworks, aligning themselves to, on a national level. Again, there was issues that were brought up. There was a big disconnect from community level uh, to national level in terms of the priorities again. Um, so that's something that really came out strong from, you know, the disconnect from communities, which, which can, which sort of aligns to what is uh, the national priorities. And one of the, the magic ones, well, there was a lot of magic um, ones, uh, people had put out their wishes, um, but two, uh, two that I really wanted to bring back uh, to the main uh, dice was, um, 
One was around, there needs to be a lot of research, which is required to understand the integration of climate change adaptation and DRR in the, the region, and also at a national level, and to continue to share uh, those across. And there was also um, uh, another one around uh, being, bringing more conversation to the table, bringing the people to the table, the government people, the donors, young people, um, and uh, platforms such as the Pacific Resilience Meeting is a is a is a is an amazing opportunity where people are able to share uh, best practices and what has been working uh, from their uh, from their different uh, countries at a national level. Naka, Lithia. Thank you very much, Feliti, for that. Um, and our last uh, group, Rania, if you could please, for the regional group, um, also the same two questions, Naka. Um, if you could just highlight, uh, you know, one, one point from each, Naka. Uh, hi, Lithia. So we had a lot of participation from the regional group and all of them are fantastic. So um, one may, a major point from the question one was um, someone named uh, Lisa Kingsbury who had said that inclusion and diversity in a meaningful way, it's not just about the science, but the actions and traditional expertise intersected. And uh, there was also another person who had said that, um, that um, uh, the adverse effects of climate change uh, not just commonly sectors, but how it is reciprocal. Okay, so it is not just uh, affecting one or two particular sectors, but it is affecting a lot of sectors and a range of sectors. Example, it is affecting the climate and it also relates to ocean and the health, which is also affected. And for the magic wands, there were a lot of uh, wands that people had, uh, uh, talked about and the major thing that people had focused on was working with communities. Some had also brought up about uh, turning to renewable energy in the Pacific, which would also support more resilience and we would be less dependent on fossil fuels and technologies. And others had also said about finances, uh, working together of the DRR and CCA practitioners and uh, so we can have common and clear messages to communities. and. Yes, there were a lot of great discussions taking place at the regional levels as well with different expertise in the participants uh, area. Thank you. Thank you, Rania. I'm surprised that they actually paid attention and listened to your instructions. I would have thought that they would have run rampant over you with, uh, with that particular group discussion. Um, <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. They were amazing. They were very supportive. <laughs> So, you know, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you uh, to our three moderators for pulling those points together. Um, if I may, I'll ask um, uh, Linda if you had any reflections based on the feedback that's coming through uh, just before I, I, su I sum up and, and, and finish. Naka. Uh, thank you, Litia. Yeah, I think we've heard a lot from, from the moderators. Uh, there were a lot of uh, rich discussions across uh, the different levels. And uh, yeah, thank, we have to thank uh, those uh, that participated. Um, I think a lot of the lessons that came out, uh, although we have uh, lessons that came out from the different levels, uh, we can see that there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, issues that uh, we will have to address across the different uh, levels. So uh, yeah, uh, thanking everyone for that again. And uh, while we, we only get uh, the moderators to mention uh, two points uh, from, from the different breakout groups, we have noted uh, the other points and, and uh, we will be sure to have reflected in, in uh, the outcome of this session. Uh, thanks, uh, over to you, Litia. Vinaka uh, Valevo, and you know, thank you again to the rapporteurs during the, to the those, those three breakout sessions, as well as the three moderators, uh, New Mai Chofaliti and Rania, thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you for your feedback, you know, it's been honest, um, what has come through quite clearly is the intersect around some of the work we're doing. 
Um, I just noticed that Nathanieli uh, had put down a note that, you know, just reflects on, given that both, you know, climate change and, and disasters are really development issues that, that, in, that, that actually trying to understand the root causes of, of those risks are, are actually quite key. And this is where research and science are really important. Um, you know, we've got, we've had technology mentioned a couple of times, um, and that's been, you know, that's been really great. Um, but I think it's just as important to know what to do with it. And, and we're seeing that come through. Now, I've been reminded that there are some questions in the question and answer. Um, uh, Fernando, may I ask you to just please read out one of those questions, Vinaka? Yeah, sure, Lita. I'm just seeing here in the, in the chat box, there is the first question. Uh, what can regional partners do better to support national and subnational integration efforts? Um, that's a question from Mosese. If if anybody wants to to put in the chat uh, what they 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 think about it. Okay, so no one's, uh, oh, so um, according to my colleagues, there are a lot of questions. Um, so thank you for these. We, we, we're going to actually um, do a grab of the questions that have been raised. I think it's important for us, and I think it is important for us to be able to work through um, finding one is actually understanding what the challenges are, but also finding solutions to them. Um, I mean, and as, as Mosese had, had stated in, in the session um, earlier today, you know, we've been talking integration now for the better part of, well, actually over a decade almost. So, you know, the, that, this learning that we've, 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 we've started um, through the Pacific Resilience Partnership Working Groups, um, even with, you know, in, in our own countries, there's definitely um, a space for these communities of practice to be able to share um, what's what's been what's been made possible through integration, but also the learning around how how has that been possible. Um, so we've got a uh, two more days of discussions around the what resilient development means, and I and I hope you will you know, remain engaged. Um, please use the opportunity to use the platform to meet. Um, some of you may have met colleagues for the first time today. Have these discussions around what your contributions are to this greater uh, effort around resilient development and how can we come together to one, share lessons, but also make some changes uh, and, and make some changes in, in, the, in the areas that we work in. Um, so we will, you do have contact details of um, colleagues who've actually participated and, and helped to pull together this um, side event, this session for you. So I would encourage you to please talk to them. Um, Fernanda, I don't know if you would like to come on. Um, and Cedric, the two of you together. Sure, Lita. So we uh, often only get to see. Yes. Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for all of the, the participants and the colleagues that help us to organize the session and to our speaker, moderators and MC for, for being here and making this, this conversation smooth and interesting for all of us. 
Um, as Lithia mentioned, uh, you can reach out to any of them or us uh, along the event. We are happy to, to keep discussing integration. And also, if you want to post the questions that couldn't be addressed uh, here in the gallery of the, the platform uh, of the Pacific Resilience Meeting, we can also keep on discussing uh, there. So with that, I just thank you very much. If Lita wants to say some final words, um, over to you. The pearls of wisdom came out in those breakout sessions, Fernanda. I mean, there's nothing really that I can add uh, that could wrap this up except to say thank you. Um, and to the team, as you can see on the screens right now, um, this has been quite a rich discussion. Um, definitely some points that we would like to pick up um, following the following this event. Uh, Fernando, I think you need to uh, um, stop sharing the slide. Okay. So from us to you, thank you.